this experiment, we wanted to vary the acidity of the solvents used to synthesize our crystals. So yeah, now it's dumb. Alright, but we don't want you sleeping with the fishes tonight, so safety first. Make sure you got your lab coat, your gloves on, and your safety glasses. In order to make macro crystals, first, you get the merchandise. Second, dissolve the right amount in water. You gotta get that thing nice and saturated, you know? Third, put it in a petri dish and hope for the best. Okay, and to make microcrystals, one, you make half-saturated solutions of the potassium ferrocyanide in water, HCl and KOH. Two, you fill the plate with various conditions. Three, finally, you put a three microliter drop of each solution on the screen and place the screen on one of the conditions. Six million ways to die, choose one. It's time to escape, but I don't know where to disappointing it might have been as you've been working toward that dream that that dream that you're holding in your mind that it's possible that some of you already know that it's hard it's not easy it's hard changing your life that in the process of working on your dreams you are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself and say, God, why, why is this happening to me?
One mole of calcium acetate. One mole of copper acetate. At a one-to-one -one ratio of calcium ions and copper ions, the double salt crystal calcium copper acetate does not form. Instead, copper acetate crystals are formed. But at a four is to one ratio of calcium ions to copper ions, the double salt crystals of calcium and copper acetate do form. Crystals. We chose to vary the pH of the solution themselves while growing to see the to see its effect on the growth rate and the size of the final crystals. To vary the pH of the solutions, we added hydrochloric acid to lower the pH by one, and we added sodium hydroxide to increase the pH by one. But then we found out that when we add uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, the growth rate increases and it produces bigger crystals. Whereas when we add sodium hydroxide, the growth rate decreases and the crystal becomes smaller or it just precipitates and doesn't produce any crystals. So we are still investigating on how the lingons and the protonation of the added solvents affect, uh, vary the pH and also affect the growth rate. Thank you.
decided to grow paracetamol crystals, which is a pain reliever. While researching our crystal, we found something called the synergistic effect, which means that the combined effect of something is greater than each individual effect. For example, alcohol taken with paracetamol is hazardous. Based off of this effect, we came to the conclusion of examining the effect that varying the percentage of an alcohol, like ethanol, in water has on the size of paracetamol crystals grown. Basically, as vapor pressure of the solvent increases and the solubility of the crystal in the solvent increases, crystal growth is facilitated. Paracetamol is more soluble in ethanol than in water. Water has a higher vapor pressure than ethanol. Thus, the best way to get the largest crystals would be a combination of each. That's why 50% and 75% of ethanol and water produce the largest crystals. To confirm this, we grew paracetamol microcrystals, and similarly 50 and 75% ethanol produce numerous larger sized crystals. This shows that finding a balance is key when trying to grow large crystals. Thanks for watching! Water, sodium bromate, and sleep deprivation. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little crystals. But Mona and Hadi decided to add an extra ingredient to the concoction, <laughs> methanol. Whoa, whoa, Thus, faster growing crystals were born. Both macrocrystals and microcrystals of sodium bromate, pew, sodium pew, bromate, and pew. sodium bromate have dedicated their lives to giving the hard-working lab partners better grades in FOS. If you want a more in-depth explanation of how these amazing crystals came to be, come to table M5 and meet the creators. Here in the FOSS lab, we are endeavoring to innovate beyond previous crystals every day. We present to you the U crystal. We're often faced with a paradox when we design, to make crystals smaller or lighter, while at the same time more powerful. The more we reduce the crystal's physical volume, the more difficult it becomes to increase its power and maintain its beauty. But if we can overcome these challenges, we can make something without compromises. U crystals can be just under 5 micrometers in diameter. We actually started working on these crystals weeks ago, designing and engineering the primary technologies needed to make it. The ultrasound bath is incredibly powerful at 100 watts to emit up to 40 kilohertz of ultrasonic frequency. Because of this frequency, the crystals can get smaller, yet without any loss in crystal quality. Reducing the crystal size, the product becomes significantly more versatile in manufacturability. Crystals that can fulfill the needs of every modern man can now be tailored through the U-Crystal technology. The culmination of crystal technology, a degree of art, the U-Crystal.
No comment, no comment, <laughs> no comment. What shall we do today? Oh, I don't know. Uh. <sighs> Let's grow crystals in different pH levels. Ah! I'm calling upon the powers of science. Oh, you might need this phone. Okay. I'm calling upon the powers of science. Today we will be growing macrocrystals and microcrystals via supersaturation and the hanging drop vapor diffusion method to test the effect of pH on crystal growth during the crystallization <laughs> process. Can we go back? This is the moment. Do you want to know what's next? Come to D5. D5. <gasps> Good morning, Professor. Today we're going to talk about crystal growth. Two types, macrocrystals, microcrystals. Examples, ordinary alum, KDP, lysozyme. Two methods. For macrocrystals, supersaturation, evaporation. For microcrystals, hanging drop vapor diffusion. Is it like yoga, Professor? Can I show it to you? Back to the lecture. So there are many factors that affect crystal growth, like pH and temperature. Professor, how do they affect? Chemical intuition. Crystals are all around us. They're used for various things. Industries, therefore, aim to make crystals as quickly as possible, but also very good quality. For this project, we are making the blue stuff. Well, not that blue stuff, but this blue stuff, copper sulfate. Factors such as pH of the solution, presence of certain impurities in the solution, as well as the solvent in which copper sulfate is dissolved, will have an effect on the final quality and structure of the copper sulfate crystals. We investigated the effect of pH on the rate of growth of copper sulfate crystals, as well as on their quality. Our results were so shocking that we knew you wouldn't believe us talking about them, so we put them on a poster just for you. Please do stop by and look at our poster. Thank you very much for your participation. Young scientist, dear friend, if you choose a year and pause with the Crystal Project, this is what you have to do. Have an inexhaustible source of caffeine. Believe me, you're not getting any sleep. Make something boring sound cool, like a cat bladder stone. Okay, maybe not. Find a subject to make your own. March away from something glamorous. Know your subject. It might not make sense, but that is where you come in. Original discoveries are all that matters. I repeat, all that matters. You will make mistakes. A lot of them. Just try to not make big ones. Repeat your experiments until you are sure of your results. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And remember, when we stand on the shoulders of giants, we are able to see a little bit further. Now go run and see our poster. Follow the cat. Follow the cat. <laughs>
Our crystals are growing. Oh my god, it's so hot in here. It must be Yavan and Krishna. Our project was primarily concerned with the question of how temperature affects two stages of crystal growth, nucleation stage and seed growth stage. Apart from that, we wanted to know how does the concentration of ligogymes affects its crystal growth. of our idea was actually two months ago when Siva and I encountered two journal articles. One investigated the inhibited effect of barley and oats on the crystallization of calcium oxalate. The other one studied the effect of ultrasonic waves on the crystallization of honey. What we love about our barley and oats experiment is its relevance to our daily life. So we decided to simulate conditions of urine and looked at the effect of different food extracts on the crystallization of calcium oxalate. And for our macrocrystallization part, we planned to compare the glucose crystals grown with and without ultrasound. Calcium oxalate has a very low solubility point and uh, it hampered our results. The supersaturated solution of glucose resulted in a very viscous syrup rather than crystal. And despite these issues, we pushed forward and modified our experiments and crystallized aluminum chromatic crystal. It has been an enjoyable experience and we can't wait for this moment to share it. Piezoelectricity refers to the electric charge that accumulates in solids like quartz. It is a phenomenon that has very important applications like high voltage power sources and sensors. Recently, Lithium tetraboride was found to exhibit such properties and has been synthesized through industrial methods like the vertical lift technique. The compounds with structures similar to lithium tetraboride may exhibit piezoelectric properties, and thus crystals of sodium and potassium tetraboride were synthesized in this experiment. The methods used were the evaporation technique and the hanging drop method. The experiment showed that crystals grew best at concentrations close to their solubility point and in solutions with pH values close to 7. In the case of microcrystals, Alkaline earth metal chlorides as crystallizing agents produce the most regular crystals.
snow falls on the rolling sand dunes of Abu Dhabi as two legendary beings of the foundations of science curriculum enter their kingdom. Have you seen bigger crystals than these? You'd probably say yes if you had not seen these. Ah, observe our crystal gains while young William gets his gains. As the humble pair speaks to the camera about the literal nonsense, I will instead extend to you an invitation to the Crystal Symposium, where you can learn from the pair about the effects of amino acids on the growth of crystals, because amino acids equals proteins equals gains. So if you want to learn about gains, head to the gymnasium, or just come to the symposium on 11th of May from 4 to 6 in the evening. The magnet is swirling like this swirling storm called force. Couldn't pipe it, heaven knows I try. Everyone's getting such awesome results. Don't weigh it wrong, don't supersaturate. Get the concentration it should be. Measure, dilute, don't be too slow. Well, now they know. Let it grow, let it grow. Can't crystallize anymore. Let it grow, let it grow. Submit the draft and slam the door. I don't care if my dishes are on the floor. The symmetry get out of hand The shape never bothered me anyway